Use after free happens when um, you probably know that uh, memory is not freed uh, normally in Windows or in uh, any other general purpose operating system. So uh, if you store something in memory, when time comes for it to be freed, it's just marked as free and any other process can use that uh, memory area for its purposes. But that doesn't mean that it becomes uh, clear for, for, for some reason. It, it, it's not zeroed out, it's just, uh, it's just marked as free and everything that is contained in this memory area, in these memory pages, uh, is available to the process that uh, claims access to this memory and uh, any process can do that because it's it's free okay it can be used by anyone so this vulnerability uh, happens when there is some uh, interesting some sensitive data stored in the uh, memory areas that uh, can be reused by other applications so let's say there is some cryptographic materials like uh, like private keys or uh, pre-shared keys or security passwords that are stored somewhere and uh, this area is not freed, is not filled in with zeros when it becomes available to other processes. So in this way, uh, the security of this data can be compromised. Uh, heap corruption, heap overflow, uh, type confusion, th these are different other ways to exploit uh, memory corruption bugs and uh, I will give you the link uh, in the notes to this section in order to read through more detailed description of this memory box but for now uh, let's focus on how to uh, prevent that how Windows deals with uh, making this happen uh, rarely or, or at least less frequently as it was <laughs> in the 90s okay so there are these two uh, really strong additions to Windows uh, security architecture, which are potentially able to prevent all sorts of old bugs in uh, uh, in Windows. But unfortunately, they are not uh, normally used by software developers. They are becoming to be used more and more, but still, not all uh, software developers pay enough attention to enabling these options during uh, compiling of the products and there are different reasons for that so for example uh, DEP stands for data execution prevention I guess yeah so as I said there are different segments of memory available to each process there are data segments uh, and there are code segments so uh, by by uh, rewriting stack for example you are operating over the data uh, segment right so you're filling in a a value of a variable okay and by simply marking this area in the memory by uh, a flag yeah that this is not executable and should not be executed at any point of time rewriting the stack uh, the instruction pointer doesn't give you anything because you have rewritten the pointer and it now uh, points to some point in uh, data segment yeah but uh, this address will not be executed because it's marked with the uh, DEP okay so this is the basic concept and what is ASLR when you are trying to exploit memory corruption box you ha have to put your executable d data <laughs> that sounds ridiculous but that's what it is yeah your executable data should be placed somewhere and uh, in order to jump there yeah you have to use some uh, some instructions that are already in memory yeah so you cannot just uh, put some you cannot just magically uh, figure out where this instruction of jump to the contents of uh, a specific register in, in the processor yeah 
uh, at any given time. So you have to like uh, run this program that you're trying to exploit in a virtual environment and try to debug it to the point where you know that yeah, there is this specific DLL that is loaded uh, by default somewhere, yeah, by some address in memory you can access it and there is this uh, jump instruction that says, I don't know, jump uh, EAX, yeah, so EAX uh, contains an address and you have put your address, your address of uh, your crafted piece of code there and then just uh, rewrite the instruction pointer by the address of this already existing instruction in memory yeah in the already loaded dll that says jump there okay so that's what you can do at what you do during a uh, buffer overflow ex exploitation for example so you have to know where it is what aslr does it prevents um code from loading to the same areas of uh, memory so every time you are booting windows its components for example that are normally compiled with the slr functionality they are loaded to different randomly assigned areas in memory and this is really cool <laughs> yeah so this is quite reactive but thinking of that was really really interesting point yeah and they have implemented that and uh, kudos for microsoft this is a really nice prevention strategy they have taken and it's it works out but sometimes it's not just it's just not enabled by developers for some reason i don't know why uh, but sometimes uh, using aslr basically breaks their software so their software is historically so reliant on uh, different uh, on its different parts being located in uh, specific statically addressed areas of memory that uh, they uh, just cannot do that and uh, basically you cannot prevent this program from running in your system because this is really deliberate yeah so you each program freely decides whether it uses or or not these two uh, very cool features yeah there are ways to force that but in this in this way, you won't be able to use your favorite program. So there is always this trade-off. You either use secure code that is compiled with this flex and it uses SLR and it uses DEP and DEP and SLR both do not break its functionality or you just uh, use it without protection or decide not to use that. Okay, so I hope this is not a complete mess in your head right now. If these uh, concepts are new to you i really recommend uh, one of the courses on coursera i will link them in uh, the notes for this video uh, this really puts every bit of data i've just provided in order yeah and it's totally recommended for you if you uh, pursue the career in penetration testing and want to know more about uh, software security the concepts the tools the techniques and the, the theory behind that okay a little bit uh, about what you will use when you will do this binary or memory exploitation okay uh, I just call it binary because uh, there is this totally different area of uh, web applications that are more prevalent in the internet right now but binary is still the thing it's cool it's uh, it has its air reversing community code reversing community is really wide and uh, they have a lot of expertise so the things they use are different debuggers so uh, there are free ones and there are the ones for money uh, ida pro for example is one of uh, the commercially available tools and uh, it's really cool most of uh, binary hackers use that it's very popular in the version community but there are also uh, cool free uh, tools that you can start from for example only dbg and the community debugger are both uh, 
running for Windows, I guess. Yeah, only only on Windows. And uh, GDB is GNU debugger, I guess, and uh, it's uh, it's running on both Windows and uh, Linux. Yeah, for different purposes because the the x86 uh, architecture is is the same. Yeah, when you're running Windows or Linux, so. Uh, actual concepts, the very low level principles of execution are the same, but uh, there are different compression and compilation formats and uh, the binary is not the same on different platforms, but the tools can be tweaked and the uh, Windows tools are running good for debugging Windows binary code and Linux tools are do the same for Linux binary code. Okay, there are a lot of existing exploits in Metasploit. Yeah, so Metasploit contains uh, a lot of useful stuff and exploits are maybe the most useful part of it. So uh, for existing vulnerabilities, for vulnerabilities already found and most probably already patched, uh, there are a lot of exploits in Metasploit. You can download Metasploitable, yeah, the special distributive of uh, distribution of Linux created just for these purposes and start using Metasploit for that. And uh, there is no specific Windows distro for that, but uh, just getting a hold of some early release of uh, Windows XP will give you an idea, okay? So what a mess it was and uh, uh, how cool actually is Vista in terms of security compared to Windows XP. Okay, because a lot of code has been just rewritten from scratch and a lot of memory bugs are just not possible in uh, Windows Vista and the later versions. And there are of course some vulnerabilities that are not covered by Metasploit and most probably won't be anytime soon. Yeah, so there are public exploits that are just not there. No one have uh, uh, no one has written a module for Metasploit that uh, implements this specific exploit uh, or there are also bugs that are private yeah so nowadays uh, bug hunting and uh, bug trading vulnerability trading is really uh, a form of uh, getting money in a quite legal manner so it's it's not breaking the law in uh, many jurisdictions yeah so there are companies that are just buying privately the exploits on the market and uh, the price is really good you know there are companies that are buying exploits uh, buying vulnerability information for their own products yeah so apple is uh, buying for for a really lot of money uh, and uh, Microsoft, yeah, they, they pay a lot too, but of course, uh, since Microsoft has a long history of uh, remote exploitation, their price tags are significant, significantly lower. But just to give you an example, if you find a straight through exploitation in iOS, like from user visiting a URL in the browser and uh, then you exploit the browser, then you get out of the sandbox and you exploit the iOS and you get to ring zero. Uh, this can amount in uh, more or less a uh, million dollar. Okay, so this is a lot of money. Uh, and if you will circumvent uh, a local privileges of a process yeah if you increase your privileges to a super user in windows this can amount in uh, tens of thousands okay so it's like 50 50 60 grand uh, of money paid by microsoft or someone in the market uh, yeah and about someone in the market this is an interesting part these bugs these bugs are traded not freely, but there are some so-called vulnerability brokers that are just buying this stuff from the market. Uh, these are normally security consulting firms that provide the services to state powers. <laughs> yeah, so these are really cool 
uh, bugs that are then implemented, are then uh, included in their products, in their <laughs> modern internet weapon or, or what, I don't know how it's called nowadays, but uh, yeah, there are guys that explicitly uh, build their business model on uh, finding bugs th themselves uh, and buying the bugs from the open market. Okay, so the more you dig into this industry, <laughs> the more uh different fascinating things you will find so for now let's uh, wrap it up about windows security overview and uh, get to the actual ways of uh, circumventing security controls in windows operating system